Once you've cleared up the navigation in your course, it's a really good idea to go into settings and make changes. Now this is whether you're starting with a fresh course or with starting with a existing course, it's still a good idea. From now on, you're gonna see me build out a fresh course in this so that you can see all the different aspects and I can go through each of the components. So in settings, under course details, we have choose an image. You can upload an image from your computer or you could use something like Unsplash and you can find images or something like that from Unsplash, which are free to use. You're welcome to use them in Canvas if you would like. So I decided to pick this winter scene. I'm recording this in November. So this kind of looks like, reminds me of back in Wisconsin. So as I create this course, here's the image that I'm going to use. And I can keep on going down through this particular set of um, settings. Time zone, this is something that you can change in your course. You do not have the ability to change the um, the name of your course or the course code, just like the sub account. Um, and there's a couple of other things that you cannot change. If you do need those changed, please let your instructional technologist know. and We can go ahead and make that adjustment for you. But moving down, we've got participation, term versus course. Now, if we have created the course for you, it will automatically be chosen for you, but that's something that you can change. And then you put in the start and end time for this course. So if it's set by term, then the term itself above will determine exactly the start and end time. If not, you can change it to course. And now you can put in the start and end dates. So let's say I want to go with January 17th. through May 24th. Now notice it's giving me an, a uh, notice that course participation is set to expire at midnight. So the previous day is the last day of the course. So what that means is May 23rd at 1159 PM plus one minute is when this is going to expire. So what we want to do typically is change this to be 11, colon 59 p.m. And notice that message goes away. You do not have the ability to check and uncheck this restrict students from viewing the course before or after the course dates. If you want to change that, you simply change it in this start and end date. Default time. So this is a feature that Canvas has that you can make everything due at 11:59 p.m. or 10 p.m. or whatever time you want, you can actually specify in here. So it goes on the hour except for 11:59 p.m. It does offer that. So what that does is it will now make everything due by default. You are always allowed to change it, but at 10 p.m. on whatever night it is that you have it due. The reason for that is just simply that you are in control then of your due date and it's setting some default for you. If you want to change the language, it defaults to English and there's a lot of different, in fact, United States English, there's a lot of different other languages that it can be. So for instance, if you, if you are teaching a Spanish class or a, um, French class, Japanese class, Chinese class, those may be available in here to change it to. You can take a look. I see um, Spanish and French, different kinds, uh, but I'm guessing that Chinese and Japanese are not available as I don't see them. So, that's only if you want everybody in your class, all of the things in your class to be based on that particular language. File storage, notice it says how large the file storage is. 
That is set by us. If you need more storage, please contact your instructional technologist and they can make the appropriate adjustment. Large course. At IVC, we tend not to have courses that really are like this, but um, for large courses, say of a thousand students, multiple hundred students, you may want to break them into student groups and then you can have it automatically launch speed grader in that based on the groups rather than it being all several hundred students at the same time. The next part is a grading scheme. For a grading scheme, you can enable a course grading scheme and now I can set the grading scheme. So this is how the students are going to get grades. You see A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, etc. Here what I can do is I can just simply edit this scheme. If you have stored a scheme, you can go ahead and adjust that. What I tend to do is get rid of everything that is not what I want. So a lot of times we only have A, B, C, D, and F that are available to us. So I'm going to get rid of all of those other ones. And then I'm going to change it and say 90 to 100. And notice when I do that and I hit tab, it changed the next one B to start at 90. So 80, 70, 60. If you in Canvas, if you are having it actually say the letter grade for the students, it is going to go based on this range. So that's where this can be useful. And now I can go ahead and save the scheme. Done. And now I have enabled this within this course. License should tend to be private. There are reasons that it'll change to other things. Copyright, that's up to you. Typically, we do not have that marked. Visibility should be set to course. We do not want to include this course in the public course index. Format, by default, your class will be set to whatever format um, is listed in IMS on campus, online, or blended. Blended would be considered hybrid, or hybrid would be considered blended. Mastery paths is something that we'll talk about much later in this. You can create a description for the class, and then there are more options. These more options are actually the more important of the options, at least personal opinion. So if you have a course if this is not a course that's created through um, our student information system, you have an option here at the top to let students self-enroll by sharing with them a secret URL. This allows students, you can send them an email with just a link. They click on the link and they can enroll in your course. Now, this can be used for clubs. This can be used for programs and other things. This is not to be used for students in a published course. In fact, that doesn't allow you to do that for a published course in our course catalog. The next one here, show recent announcements on the course homepage. I like to have that turned on, and then you can choose the number between 1 and 15 that you want to have show up. So what this will do, based on what I have right now, is once I make an announcement, it will show up at the top of the home page. The next announcement will show up right above it. The third announcement will show up above that. So there'll be three announcements up there. The fourth announcement will push the first one off and it'll only be the second, third, and fourth announcements that will show up. But it will stay at the top of the course home page for the students and for you as the teacher. This is really useful so that the students see your announcements yet one more place. So a number of announcements shown on the home page is a really nice tool. The next one, let students attach files to discussions is a really nice thing to have marked that allows students to attach a file. This can be a video file, it can be a document, it can be whatever it is, an image, anything that you want to have attached into a discussion. 
Nice feature. If you do not have that on there, the only thing they can do is type a response as a reply for a discussion. The next one, let students create discussion topics. Typically, this is turned off in our classes, and basically this is just not allowing them to create their own discussion topics for ver for whatever reason they decide they want to create a discussion topic. This is, as all of these settings are, this is completely up to you as the instructor as to what you want to have. The next one, let students edit or delete their own discussion replies. That can be useful or, or not. Um, a lot of people have it set so that that's not allowed. Ergo, it's not checked right now. But it can be useful if you want students to clean up their own. If they've said something that is inappropriate or something like that, they can go in and just clean it up themselves. A lot of times, if they've said something inappropriate, we actually want to document it. So that's where not having that checked is an advantage. That can be still edited or deleted, but um, it cannot be done by the student themselves. Letting students organize their own groups. Students organizing their own groups is um, an option. A lot of times if you're using groups, you're going to want to organize their student groups or allow them to, to choose what group they're in. This is actually creating the groups themselves, if that's what you want. Not putting them into groups, not creating the groups and letting them select either way. This is them creating from scratch their own groups. Hiding totals and hiding grade distribution from the students. So when the students, when we get into the grade book, you'll see that the students have the ability to see what their grades are. When they've got grades, this will hide the total if you want, or it'll hide the grade distribution graph. So you don't have students who have an idea as to what other students might have gotten. It will not tell them what, what student itself had that. It's just what is the grade distribution graph? How many students had higher than them versus lower than them? And then, so those two I've seen go both ways as far as faculty choosing which one they want to use or both or neither. Um, and then the last one here, disable comments on announcements. If you want students to comment on announcements, you can just have it unchecked. Or if it's checked, then you can choose who you want to have to be able to do it. Notice it says, well, dis disable comments on announcements makes it so that it's available or not. The next one is who can create, rename, or edit course pages by default. So only teachers, teachers and students, we do not have an anyone option. It's teachers, students, maybe a TA, something like that, but that's it. So um, from that perspective, who is allowed? Typically it's only teachers. When you are done, as in everything, every page really in this area, when you're done, you need to hit save or update. And that will now update the Canvas course. So now if I go to my dashboard, you see that image that I chose is now the image for this particular class. I can click on the class and go in and everything is organized, set up exactly the way I have specified in the course details.